Hi, y'all. So I was just reading an article on CNN, America's most trusted source for news, of course, and it is uh, about how rapey and predatory and sexually harassy science actually is. And uh, it cited to a study, a peer-reviewed study, appearing on PLOS One, which proves, obviously, that 71% of female scientists are sexually harassed. So, as is the case with any feminist study, you have to go read the study because somewhere in there is a little bit of ledger domain going on, and this one is no exception. The first place I looked at was the sample size, because that's a, a, a very frequent culprit. Pardon the cat meowing, it's a stray cat we took in uh, and had surgery for it, and it's recovering and driving everybody crazy. Anyway, so it was a large sample size, and I thought, oh, well, this is off to a good start, but 71%, that's really high. I mean, these people must, how do they get any science done with all the time they must spend harassing women? So I was reading through the survey that they uh, handed out to the anonymous respondents, who they have a high degree of confidence uh, are telling the truth for reasons, and a high degree of confidence that there aren't duplicates for some reason. So, uh, question 31, and this is under the section for sexual harassment and assault. So, um, the, the trick here is that you just crowd what, the predicate of what will qualify as harassment, and then you can explode the numbers. Uh, we'll play a game with that in a minute. Sexual harassment and assault, 31. With what frequency did you observe or hear about other field site researchers and colleagues making inappropriate or sexual remarks? So, one way you could qualify as a as a, a good data point here is if you've heard from someone about someone else somewhere else having been harassed so that'll count and question 32 this one is a gem um, have you ever personally experienced inappropriate or sexual remarks comments about physical beauty cognitive sex differences or other jokes at an anthropological field site if you had more than one experience, the most notable one to you. Yes, no, I don't know. If so, who is the perpetrator? Someone superior in rank to me, a peer, someone inferior in rank to me, or someone unaffiliated with the field site, local resident, law enforcement, some visitor. So uh, it doesn't even have to be another scientist. It could be some random Joe off the street who's done it to you. Had a bar nearby, I guess. I mean, I don't know where you're running into all these cops. <laughs> they don't sit around anthropological dig sites, uh, field sites, I can tell you. Anyway. So uh, I, I would be surprised to learn that, uh, particularly among uh, the uh, social sciences, that discussions about, what was it, cognitive sex differences w would arise, that these kinds of discussions would arrive, arise with some degree of frequency, particularly given that there are cognitive differences between men and women. They're not particularly large, but they're still there, and it's an interesting topic. Uh, I bet I could go by using this metric of uh, this uh, method of crowding the predicate with a whole bunch of uh, ors that would let you qualify. That's ors, not whores, for anyone, for any feminist out there. I said ors, not whores. So shut your whore mouth if you go to say anything rude. Anyway, um, I could go to I don't know, like a, a dog pound, and uh, ask women there if if they've been sexually harassed. I could put this in a little survey, and under the the uh, sexual harassment slash assault section. I could ask them, have you ever, uh, have you ever um, personally experienced inappropriate or sexual remarks, comments about physical beauty, and a whole bunch of other things, and then I could add in, or ever heard someone using the word bitch. I would imagine that arises somewhat frequently at dog pounds, considering that female dogs are called bitches, and I would imagine that since that's the actual term for them. It arises uh, with some degree of frequency, and when, when you circle yes, no, or I don't know, when you circle yes, you now count as a person, in my hypothetical dog pound, who will have been sexually harassed by someone using the correct term for a female dog, in the same way that if someone is discussing at an anthropological uh, meeting cognitive sex differences, you are a victim of harassment. Presumably, if you go to an eye doctor and someone there is talking about corrective eye surgery or corrective lenses, uh, you have been disability harassed. Oh my God, this person is... Have you, have you ever experienced negative comments about having a disability, i.e.? Has your, op <laughs> your optometrist ever mentioned that, that you're nearsighted or farsighted? Perhaps you have an astigmatism? You are a victim. Everybody's a victim. I'm, not, I'm only surprised that it's not 100% of people uh, who at one point or another in their career... Uh, would have heard about cognitive sex conversations about cognitive sex differences, and and 
and whatnot. I mean, that is astounding that, that there are 29% of female scientists, social scientists, scientists, who have never been exposed to a conversation about cognitive sex differences. I mean, that is, that is shameful they haven't had discussions about that. It is a topic. What are you studying when you take all of your life sciences and your psychology and whatnot? Uh, wait, who, probably a feminist gender basket weaving or some shit. Who knows? Anyway, I just thought that I would uh, discuss this very rigorously done and extremely important piece of scientific research. Have a great day.